Welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I really appreciate you visiting. Um, if you'd hit the like button before you leave, that helps me out a lot. Uh, I wanted to thank my subscribers for being so uh, awesome and putting such nice comments in the comment section. And just for signing up, because I'm at 2,500 uh, subscribers, which kind of is amazing to me. So thank you for that. I wanted to give a special thanks to my newest patron over on uh, Patreon, and that's Andrea M., um, if you're interested in checking out my Patreon, uh, it's a place where there's a little bit more interactive communication going on. Uh, it's a growing community of people who are interested in making jewelry. And uh, I think uh, we're all learning a little bit from each other over there. It's kind of a cool place. So you might check it out. There's a link in the video description down below. So check that out. <clears throat> there's a number of other ways to support the channel uh, listed in the video description if you're so inclined. Today, um, it feels like spring out, and I thought, you know, it, let's do something sort of floral today. And so I'm going to make a flower ring. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of flower this is, but I've seen them before, and it's kind of, I mean, it's going to be a stylized version of it, but it's got kind of a projecting center part, and I'm going to use a, a kind of a bullet shaped citrine, uh, and then it's going to have a couple of layers of petals around it, kind of folded backwards a little bit. So. It should be a fun one. I've never made one like this, uh, but we'll give it a try and see how it comes out. So uh, stay tuned. So here's my little citrine that I'm going to use. See, it's kind of a bullet shape. Just make sure you can see that. Um, so bullet shapes are really hard to set in a bezel because they have a tendency to rock back and forth like this in the bezel, no matter how hard you tighten it. So I'm probably going to put a little dab of epoxy in this one to make sure it doesn't move at all. And uh, that'll just give us a little, uh, a little nicer uh, setting when it's done, I think, for the, for the stone to stay stable. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make a bezel for that. We'll, put a, we'll build a little step on the inside of the bezel so it can sit on it. So we get an open back. Um, I'm going to um, cut out two flower shapes like this. I did one in advance just to see how it would come out. And this is what it looks like. And so uh, we punched a hole in it, and then I cut out a circle, and then I, you know, uh, marked out 60 degree angles, and then I just kind of manually curved them in with my drawing here. Uh, so we'll we'll do another one of those, and then we'll mount one on top of the other, kind of facing down like this, uh, around the stone and the bezel, and then we'll mount it on a band. But in between there, I'm going to make a little kind of a spacer so it sits up a little bit higher. And I think I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 18 gauge, uh, 18 gauge um, sheet, make a little uh, strip of it, turn it into a circle, and then maybe dap it so it kind of flares out a little bit. And then we'll mount the bezel on that and then attach a band to that. So, so it looks like we're going to need 18 gauge. We'll need 3 16 inch uh, high bezel strip, fine silver. And I'm using, let's see, I'm using 18 for this, 18 for that. Uh, the band, I'm probably going to use some, I don't know, 8 or 6 gauge half round and just make kind of a simple band because I think the focus of the ring on this one is going to be the flower. So uh, I'll just make kind of a simple band. All right, so let's get started on that. Um, I think let's make a bezel first. I'm going to use uh, 26 gauge for this bezel still strip. the end flat here. Oh, I think I'm going to use some 14 gauge square to make a circle around the base of the bezel too for the, the little petals to sit on. I think that'll make it easier to assemble the whole thing. I usually add a little extra there when I make the mark so that I have enough to file a little bit and I don't get too tight of a bezel then.
I always use uh, spray on Mighty Flux from Rio Grande. And then I'm using hard silver solder in the sheet form. If there's ever a part in my videos where I don't explain uh, something like, say you're interested in learning how to do a an open back bezel setting. There's a video about that, so if you look back through my videos or do a search on my video page, you should be able to find it. There's a lot of little skill videos like that. That's good. I want this one to be snug because of its bullet, bullet shape, because the reason it's hard to get these to stay straight is because um, they go up like this pretty steeply, and so um, it's hard to get a, a good grip over a curve on it because it's kind of a steep climb to its point. And so it has a tendency to rock in there a little bit. But if you have it tight, it's going to be doing that a little bit less. If you have lots of space in there, it's going to do it quite a bit. But like I said, we're going to use a dab of glue to cheat a little bit. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> we'll need a little bit of 18 gauge wire, so I'm going to make a, a little step. I was really bad about listing the pieces this time. You can always check the video description. Always try to put the materials you need in the video description as well. And some of these decisions I make are sort of arbitrary choices just because of preference. And so you can always vary things, change things up a little bit. Most of these uh, videos I'm doing are hopefully in order to stimulate some ideas. You know, feel free to copy them exactly, but add your own flair if you want to. I love seeing it when somebody uh, sends me a picture of something that they've made based on my tutorial that looks a lot different than mine because everybody brings their own stuff to their art, you know, and it's kind of nice to, to see other people's, the insides of other people's brains. <laughs> Patrons, I think it was, uh, made a pair of uh, the little spider earrings that I made a long time ago. And I think they came out better than mine. I liked them a lot better than mine. Everybody brings their own fun ideas to things. I think that's pretty good. I don't want to raise this one up too high because I want to have plenty of bezel to work with. When we get to the point where we're going to be setting the stone, I'll double check to see if the height works well enough. We can always add another ring at that point if we need to, uh, to raise it a little higher. But right now I'm going to solder this in. The easiest way to do it when you have something like this is just find a flattish spot on your pad. Put a few pieces over there. And then use lots of solder. If I can pick it up. The tweezers I got here have messed up my hands. Okay. Can you guys see that okay? So we'll flux. We'll just set this on top of those pieces. Heat it around the outside and then it should just kind of draw it right up in there.
got Mother's Day coming up pretty soon. I'll have to think of a project for Mother's Day. Or you could make your mom one of these rings. Get a nice flat bottom then with a hole in it. All right. So this is going to go around here like this, hopefully. I may have to file it out just a little bit to get it to fit in there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tight, so I'll have to probably do that. Um, I think what I was going to do, though, is I was going to put a lip around the outside of this, too, for these to kind of rest on. And then we'll make the second one of those uh, petal uh, circles. Um, but let's put a little lip on this. I'm thinking those are 18 gauge, so they're pretty thick. So I don't want to raise them up too high on the bezel. So maybe I'll use, I might just use a piece, let's use some 16 gauge. Probably always file it kind of on a downward slope to make those sit lower on there if I need them to. I'm guessing. We'll see. This will be a fun experiment to see how this one goes. That's pretty close. some of the excess solder. I used a little kind of a big piece there. So Next time I'll use a littler piece. I recently got a jump ring manual. I might as well make use of it. It's pretty good on size. It's almost a little big. I'd rather have it tight, but the thing is, this is going to be hidden from above, so I don't care too much if it looks a little sloppy. In most cases, when you're soldering something around the outside of something else like this, you want to get it pretty tight, because it'll look amateurish. But this part is structural rather than decorative, in this one. That solder seam on the ring will probably provide some of this honor here because I used a pretty good sized chunk. But right, I'm going to add some extra here. So now we've got a ring on the outside and a ring on the inside. File that flat again. Just a little too tight yet. Pretty much there. Definitely going to have to put an extra um, ring in there because it sits up higher than I want. I think what I'm going to do, in order to make this sit down a little bit lower, I'm going to angle this down.
kind of like that, all the way around. So it sits down a little bit lower. I can see that that's going to be a little bit of a problem, so let's be proactive about it. <laughs> the outside of the bezel with the Dremel for a minute. <clears throat> I used the Dremel after I filed it kind of at an angle and then I carved it down as low as I could so that we get, a, get it to sit as low as we can there. So hindsight I probably would use a quarter inch bezel so it's a little bit taller but I think we can we can sneak by here. So but we got it also to fit in there. So now I just need to make another one of these guys. So, so I have uh, a second one of these that I drew. Fortunately, this little scrap I think is going to be might be able to get it off of there. Let me see. If I can get it off of here, I will. So we're going to tape this down to a piece of 18 gauge sheet. Um, Actually, I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to mark where the center is and I'll see if I can punch out a disc with the disc cutter right in that exact spot. So that's the tricky part. Actually, I think I can get it out of there. So let's do this. Let's make a mark right about there. that off. I'm going to spend a little time flattening this back out. Might be nice if you did this and you textured the, the pieces of sheet you do petals out of. Or you, I suppose you could hammer it. Or you could stamp it with something. I'm not sure where I got this guy. I think somebody gave it to me. I'm going to kind of find the center here. Okay. So my first step is going to be to uh, punch that out with my disc cutter. You never see a disc cutter. It's just a, a steel block that you can slide a piece of sheet in the middle here. And then it's got these different pins that fit into the different holes. So you stick this in here, and you hit this with a hammer just right. It should punch a little disc out. And it, normally I'm looking for the disc. This time I'm looking for the hole in the middle here. So, well, because we'll be using the piece that's left over. Um, I'm gonna take this on the concrete floor where I can hit it really hard. And then uh, some other time I'll make a video about how to use one of these things. But it's pretty self-explanatory. The hardest part is um, it's best if you can get it knocked out in one hit, because otherwise it'll you you might not be able to get it to hit it in the same exact spot, and then you'll have a little double lip on it. Okay, if you look at it closely, <clears throat> you can see it's a little dimpled downwards from the strike of the hammer uh, when it punched that disc out. So I'm going to try and flatten that back out again a little bit. It's pretty flat. Okay. Uh, while I was off camera I just cut that center out as best I could. And normally I would, uh, you know, I would rubber cement this on here. <laughs> but my rubber cement uh, the cap wasn't on tight and so it dried up and I haven't gotten any more yet. So we're going to use a little masking tape. Hopefully that'll do it. Let's see if I can get it on here. 
pretty straight. So traditionally people saw stuff out. I'm not going to saw this one out because I can snip it out pretty much completely with, uh, with my, first of all, my little snips. I can get off most of it. Cut off this outside edge right there. You could saw this if you wanted to. This will be probably quicker. So what I'm going to do is, it's hard to do interior angles, but if you have some of these, I can actually cut out a lot of this. This is an unconventional use of this tool. to do it, you must admit to yourself that you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Cutting sheet with wire cutters. Terrible. Slide it back out again. Start doing a little heating up. off and we'll take a look at it. Perfect? Probably not, but probably good enough. <clears throat> One thing though, since I'm going to layer these guys, I think I'm going to um, Oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe next time I should do one where one's raised like that and the other one's not. That's an interesting idea. I might try that sometime. This time, though, I'm going to dome them both a little bit. Um, but because it's going to be hard to solder in between the, or polish in between these guys a little bit, I'm going to give these guys a little bit of a pre-polish. Just get rid of any scratches, save me some time later. So I'll be back in a sec. I got them a little polished up, at least on this side anyway. I didn't do the inside because that doesn't matter too much. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and dome this a little bit. That side I think probably looks nicer, so that's going to be the outside. figure out <laughs> which way it looks best because my measurements are crude that, that actually looks pretty good okay so this one we'd already gotten big enough to fit around this thing I think this one we need to file a little bit too I think that actually leaves me enough to work with up there. I think. Hmm, I wonder what the best way to solder this together is. I think maybe solder the one on first, like this. Make sure it's as far, far down as it can be, so I think I'll use this. This is a magnesia block. It's a softer surface. And I can push things into it a little bit. And I should be able to just solder it like that, and then we'll add the other one on top. So, let's cut ourselves a little bit of solder. I think I probably used up most of that other stuff.
See, we got this one in there. We got this one in there. That'll be good. I think the easiest way to get this on neatly would be to start by sweating some solder on the bottom of this top piece. So I'm just going to sweat a little bit on the inside of there. Yeah, I should be able to do that if I push this down pretty hard. Looks like it's resting on the ground or on the surface of that. I'm trying to make sure that we have contact between the top sheet and the bottom sheet so that we get good flow all there. Pretty good. Okay, now in theory there should be enough solder under there to stick that down nicely. I wasn't sure if I liked this one or not. You know, we were thinking about it conceptually. I think this is going to be kind of cool. So, I don't know if it's going to look like a flower or not, but it's going to be kind of cool. I'll settle, I'll settle for that. What we really need to do now is we need to make... Um, I need a little spacer to lift this up a bit um, off of the band. so. That sits up just a tiny bit. So I'm going to make that out of some 18 gauge sheet. And I had a little piece of that I was using. Okay, pi times diameter equals circumference. So to get it, like one diameter is straight across the stone. So Two, three, and then a little bit extra. Right there. And that should get us pretty close to the size we need. Funny thing is, this already is going to dome itself a little bit because of the way it curves when you cut it. So that will actually kind of help us out. I'm going to kind of file the top file a little bit. Come here. forever. So it's got a slight 
and we're till, I'm going to try and enhance that a little bit by using this thing here. cup shape. That'll be all right, I think. And we'll mount the band to that. So let me get this filed up nice. So let's sweat a little solder onto the side that's going to face the top. So it's already where it needs to be. There's probably enough solder on the bottom of that thing to solder it down anyway, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. I know it's hard to see on these pads. I got, I'll get, be ordering some new ones pretty soon, but you can see right here is the flower. I have the bottom side upwards, so I'm just going to mount that. Try and center that as best I can. Let's flex it a little bit. Up some extra from over here. I think it's going to have to be there. I wanted to move it a little bit. But I run the risk of cracking something or moving something out of position. So I'll see if I can just kind of shape it a little better. I'm going to have to push this back down a little bit, unfortunately. So, because uh, the reason being is because it, it slid upwards a little bit and is now at the top of that bezel. So I need a little bit of bezel to work with there. So we're going to have to try and pivot that guy a little bit. <laughs> I think I just ruined this one. Yep. Okay, back to square one. Well, it's always fun when something goes south like that. Um, so I had some, uh, some of these components slipped a little bit so they weren't straight anymore when I was um, uh, trying to get this to solder together nicely. 
or no, it was when I was doing this, I think, when I was putting this bottom piece on. Um, I went ahead and rebuilt this off camera. <clears throat> so uh, I like to look at it as extra practice just for fun. <laughs> um, and that's pickling a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make the band for it. I'm just going to use something simple. I'm going to use this uh, low dome number four from Rio. It's a uh, it's a half round wire, but it's not as tall as regular half round. It's kind of got a uh, nicer slope, but it's wide and nice. <clears throat> so what I think I'm going to do is uh, I've already shaped it into and got it to be the size where I want it to be, which is about a seven and a half. Um, I cut it be, uh, like this because this little thing on the bottom that we we put uh, on the other one. I'm going to solder it right to that. And so it needs to be about that distance. And so I'm going to file a flat spot on the top here so it can just sit right on there. I really, really don't want anything to move at this point. So, I'm going to try to make everything sort of anchored. Most of the mass is on this thing on the bottom, probably. Although it's probably pretty, well, I don't know, this band is pretty thick too, so. Sort of eight, it's just harder to get the bottom piece up to temperature. I'm going to get these in place and just heat it till it flows. Now we're talking, not even too crooked or anything. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let that pickle for a while. And then on this one, like I said, I'm going to have to epoxy the stone in, uh, but then we'll uh, tighten it up around there. Uh, so I'll probably do most of the polishing first. So I'm going to let that pickle for a while. And then we'll come back and do that stone. All right, so we got our ring here. It's all polished up. I actually added a couple of rings in there. Um, since we're gonna epoxy the stone in there, I don't think it matters too much if we add those in there. I raised it up to the level I wanted it to be. If you've never used epoxy before, it's a mixture of a hardener and a resin. I'm doing this in the garage because uh, my wife is kind of sensitive to chemical smells. Sometimes the poxy smells pretty strongly. Some brands, anyway. I don't think the last one I used was really strong. This one is just a little strong, I think. Okay. So it's important that you mix these up in equal amounts. If you don't mix them thoroughly, you may have a um, an incomplete cure, meaning it's not going to harden all the way. And I have some uh, fingernail polish remover, which is. Um, acetone basically and you can use that as a solvent for this so you don't get too much slop everywhere and this is five minute epoxy so we've got a limited amount of time to work with it so I'm going to put quite a bit in there There's going to be some overflow, so I'm going to have to wipe it off with the acetone. Of 
before I do that, though, I'm going to push this bezel inwards. some excess here now. Well, with the exception of a little cleanup polishing, it's pretty much done. I still got a little polishing compound in some of the cracks there, and it's hard to get out. Once this cures, um, I'll finish it up a little bit better, and then uh, try and get a little better picture of it. I don't know. I think, uh, personally, we achieved flower-like look. So that's kind of what I was going for. All right, I'll take better pictures, put them at the end of the All video. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the flower video. That was a fun one. Um, if you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit the bell if you do so that you get updates when I release a new video. I can just tell you, I usually release them on uh, Tuesday mornings, Thursday mornings, and Saturday mornings. So, uh, so check it out. Uh, Make sure to hit the video description for some uh, important links. There's a link to my website, uh, a place where you can buy me a coffee if you're so inclined, uh, or the Patreon links. So, um, And actually, now we even have merch. So uh, if you just really need a t-shirt with me on it, uh, look below the video here and you should see some merch. So thanks for watching again. Uh, take care. Happy silversmithing.